So basically we're gonna get this case out of the box, take a look at it and put a system in. We're gonna try out this computer case, the Matrix 30. Now this is the cheapest ATX size case that has real tempered glass and we're gonna build this thing. We've got the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, the storage, it's all ready to go. This system has been running and tested, has an OS, it's fully ready to go, has Wi-Fi with this TrendNet adapter, AC 1200 Wi-Fi. And for a power supply, I have this Thermaltake, I believe it's a 500 watt Thermaltake that I've been using and testing and it works fine. So that's what's going in this. It is the Ryzen 5 3400G. Everything's built on board, uses onboard graphics, and this is with the MSI Gaming Plus B450 motherboard. As I mentioned, this is the cheapest OATX case that you can buy that has real tempered glass. There we go, it's very light, but we have real tempered glass. So this is the Deepcool Matrix 30. This is the cheapest tempered glass computer case that you can currently buy. It goes for about $30, $35 Canadian. So this is about a $20 computer case in the US. Overall build seems pretty good. You, I do believe you get one fan. It does have a basement position. So let's take the tempered glass off. We'll take a look in this thing. There's a glass panel. It has no border on it. It's gonna be a fingerprint magnet, but we'll, we'll take a look at this. The, the front panel is kind of an interesting design. It does look pretty cool, actually. I do like that. So let's pop the front panel off. Uh, there is oh you do get a fan in the back out of the packaging you get no front fan but you do get one rear fan you get a huge cutout for a cpu cooler so there's lots of rear access to the motherboard got a drive cage front panel ports you get one usb 3.0 audio in one usb 2.0 and the back panel is kind of a bulged system okay let's put the components in it see how it turns out we do get a bag of hardware with the case. You get some zip ties, a bunch of screws, thumb screws, standoffs, a speaker little jumper thing. The case does have some dust filtration in the front panel as well as on the bottom for the air intake to the power supply. You do, here's all the hardware you get with this kit. You get six of these thumb, thumb screws. You get four long screws and you get two additional standoffs. A bunch of fine threaded screws. These ones are for the motherboard. And you've got these coarser screws. I'm not entirely sure what these ones are for. You get no instructions with this kit. You get a PC speaker, which is a rarity nowadays. So if I want to have the beep codes be able to perform it off the motherboard, you get four coarse drive screws and a bunch of these other drive screws. Oh, here's another thin one here. So that goes with these. I'm going to use the four included coarse thread screws to install the power supply. A 550 watt Thermaltake TR2550. Now this is an older power supply, but it's, uh, it's fully adequate enough to run this system. I have been testing it for quite a while on this hardware and I have no problem with it at all. As well as I did like that it was a black on black, although I hadn't realized at the time that it's got this big white sticker on the front. That is gonna be seen because the air intake being on the bottom for the bottom inlet that's what we want, but yeah, I got this big ugly sticker on here now, so that's a little unfortunate, but it's still a little bit nicer looking than a silver power supply in this case. Okay, I've got the power supply screwed in. The back panel is also off because since this is a non-modular power supply, all the cabling is, is connected. So I have put it all through one of the rear grommets in the case to hide this as much as possible. We'll see how successful I am with that, but there's a ton of wires here that we aren't gonna be using because this is a modern board that uh, doesn't really have much peripherals. We just mostly need motherboard power and CPU power. So we'll see how well I do at hiding cables. But even though it is a cheap case, all of the openings are rolled so that you're not gonna be cutting yourself on it. It is a, it is a safe case in that respect where I'm not worried about uh, bleeding out as I'm working in it. Before installing the motherboard, don't forget to install the IO shield. And it's just friction fit. You just press it in and you just work with it until you get it secure because it does just kind of click into place, but it takes some fiddling to get it properly into position. Then with your CPU, your RAM, and as many components as you can pre-install on the board, it's now time to install it into the case. First of all, you want to make sure that all your standoffs are on, that all of those are where you need them to be. And you can put your motherboard in. This is a micro ATX motherboard case. I did a test fitment and I do need to adjust something because on the rear of my board I've got this case standoff keep out zone and this rear hole is lower than this one. 
So if I look at my case, I've got this standoff, which is in the proper position, but this one over here is up too high. I do need to move this one down to the lower position. And then all the rest of them seem to be in proper locations. It's up to you to figure this stuff out as you go. All right, I'm gonna fit that into position and then screw it in. Some of these screws are in close proximity to the side of the case, so just use a long screwdriver while you're installing them in because you've got one here, one here, one up top, and then the ones that are on this side are no problem to reach. I am having to get a little bit creative with my wire routing, so the CPU power didn't have enough length to go out through a grommet and then back in through, so I've just had to tuck it around the edge of the motherboard so it goes up, around, and then it plugs into the top up here. I know it's dark. And now I'm working on the front panel connection. So this one is the USB 3.0 header and I believe this is a USB 2.0 uh, jump off. USB 3.0 header down here. And then all of the other front panel connections plug into these jumper pins here. So look at your motherboard manuals to figure out which pins you need to connect to as they're all labeled differently. We have a working system. I'm going to get you some better shots in a second, but uh, overall it's pretty clean. I just need to figure out how I'm going to fit all the wiring in behind the back. Because this, since this is a non-modular power supply, I've got the spaghetti of cables all here to, that need to be tied away. Because I'm not using any of these. I haven't needed anything that requires Molex. I have all the fans. Everything is running off the motherboard connectors. I don't need anything else that's off the power supply. You've only got this slight little hump in the panel so I can try and stuff everything in behind the back plate but you don't have much room here so the side panel it just isn't deep enough to be able to house that many plugs I'm gonna try and make this a bit better but overall that is one thing that you're getting for the lower cost this is that there just is not very good room to hide cables we have success so where everything's as tidy as I can get it and on the back side I did manage to get every single cable tucked in behind this hump. It's a real tight squeeze, but it is possible. If you just take your time and trial and error and play with it a little bit, like it's got a lot of pressure on it, but it's working. And on the inside, you can see that there's things are in relatively good position. So it's done. It's on and running, actually. It's running Windows right now. I've got YouTube up and running. We've got everything functional got this nice like corrugated look to it and this is an air intake now one thing I did do was I did add an extra fan so I did add an extra fan in the front here because the rear fan is a fixed speed fan but the front fan that I installed is PWM now the other thing that I did when running the cabling is I made sure that I had a long enough run of wires to the front panel input so that I can pull the front panel off that way I have enough room to work on it where I can pull this out a little bit and get at it. And here's the extra fan that I put in. And this is a smart speed sensing fan. So that's a little bit extra cooling. It's meant to cool your hard drives, which I don't have any, but there's some good airflow coming in here. The airflow is coming in through the bottom of the power supply, which is filtered. This front is filtered. And then we've got rear exhaust. And just the stock AMD cooler is on it, but I may do an upgrade to that later on. I've got 16 gigs of RAM, DDR2-2400. I've got this M.2 NVMe SSD in here, 480 gigs. And really the only thing that's left to do is to pop the front panel back on. Also, one of the features of this front panel is that it does have a five and a quarter inch drive bay, so you could install one optical drive if you wanted to. I am not, but you can. So I'm just gonna put this back together, pop the glass on, and it's done. Okay. So you have to be careful with this glass because there is no fingerprint protection on it. It's, uh, and it just sits up against these little standoffs here which have a little bit of rubber on them, but not much. So just be careful when you're putting those on. You need to install these, which are the special screws that hold the glass on. So just be careful when you're doing it. Now that it's all done, we can see the reason why this is the cheapest tempered glass computer case on the market. It's because this glass doesn't even key into the chassis. It's really just floating on top. And it's just the four little standoffs which are holding it on. So there is a lip all the way around. It doesn't look bad, but it's very basic. As well as if you are going to run a tempered glass computer case, it would be in your best interest to put some sort of lighting in it. And as stock, it includes no lights whatsoever. So that's something you may want to look into is adding some sort of RGB, either the CPU cooler or some fans or some RGB strips. That's a very cheap 
add-on. But overall, it's a pretty classy looking case and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. All the lights are working, power light is on, hard drive activity is on, USB ports work, front panel I.O. works, and rear panel I.O. is very clean. All right guys, so that's the Deep Cool Matrix 30. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new or in here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.